Welcome back. It's still the breakfast in Plus TV Africa. We are set for a final conversation this morning. And of course, uh, as you may already have heard, uh, Nigeria's headline inflation rose to 21.91% in February amid a Naira redesigned policy that was meant to mop up cash and curb excess currency circulation, uh, according to the organized private sector in the country. The Central Bank of Nigeria's Naira redesigned policy has contributed to a Naira crisis that has driven inflation to record highs. Nigeria's 21.91% inflation rate for February is the highest the country has experienced in 18 years. Now, data from the National Bureau of Statistics revealed that this is the second consecutive month inflation is rising in the year after it fell in December 2022 after an 11-month rise. In January, inflation rose to 21.82%, from the 21.34% that was recorded in 2022. And the NBS on Wednesday disclosed that increases in the price of bread, cereal, rent, potatoes, yam, tubers, vegetables, and meat drove inflation up uh, in the month of February. Obona Okuku is an investment and economic development expert, and he's a guest for this conversation right here on The Breakfast. He joins us via Zoom from Abuja. Obona Okuku, good morning to you. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Some experts believe that Nigeria's current inflation figure is hugely understated. Um, and they point to, um, uh, you know, the, the fundamental um, uh, details used to calculate this, uh, this inflation has been outdated. Um, they feel that the inflation probably could be close to, if not more than what we have in neighboring countries who are experiencing 50 in uh, inflation figures in the in the 50 percentile range um what i would you agree with this of course i will because when it comes to um data co uh, collection um there are different systems that you can use it depending on what you want to achieve now if the the data that you're using is you know is outdated or there are more recent figures you should use and you carefully decide not to use those figures you can't get there'll be no accuracy in you know in your in your in your out, output at the end of the day so what happens is um i mean we don't even need to go far i mean look at the figures look at this go to the market what you bought stuff for last year and this year are they comparable no of course they are not so if you do the percentage yourself without waiting for mbs the reality will be there you know looking at you so um, it's obvious, IMF have said it, um, a lot of other uh, institutions have said it, and I think um, MBS should also begin to reconsider, you know, the, the, you know, the, 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 the system that they are using to, um, cal you know, to calibrate our, our GDP figures. I think um, there's something not right. I agree. Hmm. All right. Uh, you've said it all. Um, the IMF said this, you know, uh, that we are... Uh, Nigeria has a 52% inflation and not the 21% uh, they're talking about. Um, I mean, bread, you know, a year ago, two years ago, was costing about uh, 300 a loaf of bread, sliced bread, that is, not a giga bread. Mm -hmm. About uh, mm -hmm. 300 naira, went to 400 naira, five. now you buy a uh, sliced bread for not less than 800 naira. You know, the large yeah. type, the, the fancy type, you know, it's... Uh, I uh, think uh, you've said it all. Okay. Even so, Agege bread, if you look at the Agege bread too, the price the price of Agege bread would definitely would have gone up because, I mean, the, the, the flour that they use, you know, uh, it's been imported and then the cost of uh, wheat, all of all of those things have gone up. And then the, the FX, um, the FX issue that we've had, the high cost of our, uh, you know, our, you know, being able to purchase foreign currency because some of these things we import them are high. So there's, there are no two ways about it. It's have been no simple, you no arithmetic. We don't mm -hmm. need them um, basically to tell you that things have gone, you know, up, up, you know, even up to hundred uh, percent. Organized private sector is is claiming that uh, the monetary policy uh, of the much touted monetary policy of the central bank of Nigeria, uh, which happens to be the narrow redesign policy and the cash withdrawal limits, that these have had a negative effect uh, on the nation's inflation figures, and if Listen to what um, uh, the central bank governor, Gordon Mayfield, has been saying all along. The primary reason they are implementing these policies uh, are to strengthen the Naira and to 
halt you know the inflation and and probably drive it down you know the rise in inflation and so do you agree that the policies have had a negative uh, effect to what it was intended to to achieve okay because um, I wouldn't want to make them um, anybody look like they don't know what they're doing. The reality is, I always give this illustration anytime I have the opportunity to. The fiscal mon policy managers and the monetary policy managers, like a football team, the monetary policy managers are defenders, and then the fiscal policy guys are the strikers. Now, the success of a team or a victory of a team is more dependent on what the strikers do than what the defenders do. Now, if the monetary policy uh, managers decide to design a program to see how to strengthen the Naira, it's simply because the fiscal policy managers have not done the right things to make sure that the liquidity, the strength of your, you know, ten, uh, your legal tender is, 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 you know, it can participate in the global financial market and give you excellent results. So having said that, so you see, when a when a team is being won, now using my illustration with the football team, now what happens is that defenders start to come, or when the fiscal when the when the strikers are not striking well, you notice it's just a not a conscious thing. It just happens that the, the strike the defenders now begin to push forward to see how they can help score. So that's exactly what has happened. I do this so that everybody will be able to understand what is really going on. Now the policy is coming from the, the, the central bank does not negate the fact that there are still risk risk associated with our economy. The decline in oil production, the scarcity of foreign exchange because we are so much dependent on, uh, on, 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 on FX because we are an import dependent co uh, country. The, the, pub the public finance, uh, the, 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 the way we spend our, uh, our public resources, the inequality when it comes in terms of income and opportunities. The, the, you know, so there's so much that's still surrounding the economy. So whatever the central bank does might not at any point in time, you know, solve the problem. It might, you see, it becomes like, only okay, let's try to see if this will help. So at the end of the you know, and, and, and unfortunately, this one did not help because we are not producing. So if you tighten the, if you tighten, you know, liquidity, if Oh, Bona Kuku, I'm sorry, the uh, network has inter interrupted what you were saying. I don't know if you can, you can see us. So I was going to ask you, um, so if it's, you're saying it's not helped, uh, has it made it worse? Or, or um, has it probably made it less worse than it could have been if nothing was done? Uh, Mr. Kuku, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm okay, here. Yeah. yes, yes. Sorry, you, please proceed. Yeah. So if you're saying that the, 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 the monetary policies uh, of... The Nara redesign, uh, and then of course the cash withdrawal limits have uh, not really, you know, it's it's not a, low, a standalone reason why we're not having uh, we're having this inflation uh, increase. Um, but you're talking about the fiscal side of things. But have the policies made things worse or better? Is what I'd like to know because we see what's happening as a cash crunch, and even you look at the um, informal economy you know, is suffering massively because they rely on fiscal cash. So, I mean, and, and business is slow. You know, people can't, can't transfer huge amounts of money even, even to find the, the, the funds to, to, to do business abroad. You can't find the funds anymore. Um, banks are slashing what they're giving for um, allowances for those who are looking for FX. You know, people are not doing business anymore because they do not want their funds to be, you know, lost in, in transit, <laughs> you know, from one bank to the other <laughs> electronically. Nobody wants to be a victim of that. So people are holding on to their money, you know. So, um, I, well, y y you could say that this could, could affect, you know, uh, reduce inflation. But, I mean, look at everybody is going through a hard time. Yeah, that's what it backfired, really. Let me use the word, it backfired. And I said, um, uh, and I started to describe all the other issues because when a policy backfires, we will not just look at the policy itself, whether it worked or not. We need to also, you know, x-ray every other thing within the ecosystem that would have supported the, the policy. So if you, if we want to put it, you know, the way it is, it, the policy didn't work well at all is right now because you know we don't have enough shocks in the economy to help you know we still have we can't we can't monetize 
you know, people can, like you said, people can't even, you know, do simple purchases, you know, because they don't have the liquidity in their hands to do that. So and imagine people, you know, in the in the urban areas who really don't have, you know, the infrastructure to do transfers. So a lot of people are going through so much transport. The transport system has actually been hit so much. I'm talking about, you know, the within within a city transport system. People don't have cash to pay their way home, so people now can, you know, people now trek. So there's a lot of suffering in the economy. So this, uh, this, the policy needs to be, you know, we need to look at it again. All right. And um, we hear that the banks are now saying they don't have the, the even the old naira notes to give out, um, despite the central bank's order. Uh, should we say, okay, hey guys, this is not working. Let's revert to status quo ante. Of course, if you don't have the old naira, because I mean, most of the when you withdraw, when you withdraw, uh, when there is um, a change in uh, in currency, and then you withdraw old currency, the next thing to do is to destroy those currency because I mean, it becomes uh, you know, it doesn't help the economy in, anymore. It becomes piece of paper. So if the if the central bank, if what they are saying is that they've gone ahead to destroy this before the the whole Supreme Court judgment and before you know trying to reverse the policy, so that becomes um, you know that becomes uh, another kettle of fish and then what we need to do is to ask them questions about what about printing more of this um, the, the new notes so that um, we can we can circulate more of the new notes you know within the system hmm. uh, plethora of issues that uh, we don't know when they they will be resolved um, <laughs> i think nigeria has never had it this bad in its entire history in terms of not just the uh, the inconsistencies of the policies and uh, the failure of policy, but the utter confusion because we don't know what is going on anymore. Uh, we don't even know. I think even started from. So, it started from when you know when the minister of finance, when the finance minister, when the finance minister said I actually didn't know anything about the naira redesign. I was mm. a bit. I was taken aback. I was a bit shocked as it was. Why would the finance minister not know about an area design? So it goes to show that you know people don't. Um, there, there's no. There's no. Um, they are not working together. So when people who are supposed to be working together are not working together, so these things are, are you know, bound to mm. you know, you All know right. play out. All right. We don't even know who is calling the shots anymore. <laughs> he, we don't know who is even in charge. Um, thank you so much, Obuna Koko, for your time. Okoko for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Thanks for having me. And that's the size of our package. And his brief is up next. But please uh, do remember you can follow us on social media Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And indeed, Plus TV Africa Lifestyle on YouTube as well as Plus TV Africa on YouTube. My name is Kofi Bartels. We return tomorrow with more on The Breakfast. Keep watching Plus TV Africa.